my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jessie E. This is Ravenclaw and you're watching. This video is what happens when you are a procrastinating panda. You're literally about to get four videos in one because I can't keep my life together. I have so many videos I want to produce on this channel this December, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys by making so many separate videos and I've waited way too long to post these things. So I'm just going to squish them all together and then we can move forward into the really fun stuff. Normally my reading wrap ups are very in depth. I love going into the pros and cons, the ins and outs, all of the intricacies of the books that I've read. Unfortunately, I'm not really going to be doing that for this video, but if you want real depth, go to my Goodreads. I will make sure that I I will post in-depth Goodreads reviews of all of these books within the next couple of days. This video is going to include the books I read in October as well because <laughs> procrastinating panda. In October, I read six books. The first was Baby Teeth by Zoe Stage. It's about a young mother living with Crohn's disease who has a child named Hannah. Hannah doesn't speak and is not affectionate with her mother at all. Hannah's mother has creeping suspicions that Hannah is harboring extremely violent tendencies toward her and those suspicions are confirmed in her mind when one day Hannah speaks to her and says something very disturbing. I said talk to me, damn it, or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire! So the book itself is a psychological thriller and you're kind of left wondering whether or not the stress, the extreme stress of Crohn's disease and combination of postpartum depression has led this young mother to be paranoid about her own child or if the child truly does have ill intent and sociopathic tendencies, it is trying to kill her mother. This book had so many layers, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it and it was genuinely creepy, especially if you are a parent, I think this book would scare the shit out of you. It plays off of this trope that I see in many, many movies that I often go on rants about with my personal friends. And the trope is basically men not listening to their wives or girlfriends about danger. We see this trope in We Need to Talk About Kevin, but it's definitely a trope in cinema where women are trying to warn their male counterparts to danger and the men are basically like, it's no big deal. And then they all die. This book did a fantastic job of representing invisible disabilities. It's not something that's talked about enough. People who seem like they don't have any kind of ailments or disabilities, but in reality are dealing with something that isn't visible to the human eye. So I ended up giving it between 4.2 and four and a half stars. The next book I read was by Megan Abbott and it is called Give Me Your Hand. This is a thriller about a young woman named Kit who grows up to become a brilliant scientist. Her team is composed of highly intelligent and capable young scientists and they are all vying for a spot on the final project. Only one person will get selected for the final project and Kit is doing her damnedest to make sure that it's her. Just when she thinks that she is a shoe in Diane comes back into her life. Diane was Kit's best friend in high school. It was Diane's beauty and drive that made Kit want to be a scientist in the first place. A dark secret tore the two of them apart over 10 years ago and now that Diane is back in the picture, that secret threatens to tear them both apart. Usually books with like a deep dark secret kind of miss the mark for me, I find them to be almost overly atmospheric and dramatic. This book was phenomenal. I gave it a five out of five stars. It's the best psychological thriller I've ever read. It dealt with women's issues, feminist commentary, and also had fantastic commentary on women in the sciences. As somebody who is personally in the sciences, I know that the way that women are treated in the industry isn't the greatest. I love that this psychological thriller actually provided some commentary on that issue. So far, all of these reads were read for Hookathon and the next one was too. It is Infidel by Pornsak Pichot. This comic book is about multicultural residents who move into a building that they find has been haunted by xenophobic and hostile entities. The imagery in this book is one of the most haunting I've experienced in a graphic novel so far. Aisha is our lead protagonist and she is a Muslim Middle Eastern woman. Seeing the xenophobia and the racism that she experiences on a day-to-day -day basis was extremely difficult. The art in this book was haunting and phenomenal. I loved the characters, especially her best friend who is a black woman, but we also find out that she is a devout Muslim as well. This comic is being adapted into a movie and I just can't, I honestly, I can't wait to watch it. I need it! I ended up giving this graphic novel five stars and I really hope that there's a second one because it ended on a cliffhanger and honestly, there, just, there better be a second one because I'm dying to know what, what happened to these characters. The next book that I read was a short little novella by Victor Laval and it is The Ballad of Black Tom. Victor Laval is one of the most eloquent and talented writers that we have in this modern day. He took H.P. Lovecraft's story, The Horror at Red Hook, 
and retold it through the lens of a young black man in like the 20s or 30s. What I loved most about Infidel and The Ballad of Black Tom was how both books demonstrated how horrific, how scary racism can be. The most horrifying, the most traumatic, the most fearful, terrifying experiences that I've had have been because of racism. Not because of ghosts, not because I was afraid that I was gonna get hacked up when I was camping in the woods, but because I was afraid of my fellow man. I also read the first edition of Sisters of Sorrow, which is about women living in a woman's shelter, trying to escape and heal from domestic violence. Women then become crime-fighting vigilantes who wear nun costumes and protect other people from domestic violence. The premise of this comic sounds phenomenal, but the execution just wasn't great. I wasn't a fan of the art, I didn't like the plot, a lot of things seemed to fall into place far too quickly, and I just wasn't interested in keeping up with the further issues of this comic. And the last book I read in October was A Kato Witch by Neri Akorafor. A lot of you were raving about this book and were really excited when you found out that I was reading it. It's a story about a young Nigerian girl who is an albino. I wanted to love this book so much more than I did while I adored all of the mythos and the world building. I thought it was absolutely excellent. I found that the characters themselves lacked emotion for me. I didn't really believe in their motivations. I didn't really believe in their expression of feelings. It seems like Neri focused most of her attention on building the world and telling the story, which were excellent, but the characters themselves to me fell incredibly flat. I ended up giving this book four stars. And then in November, I read three books. I didn't finish The Girl Who Drank the Moon in Time for Witchathon, uh, so I finished it on like November 3rd. I gave this amazing book five stars. I could film an entire video talking about this book. I'm not even gonna tell you about it. I just think that you should read it. It is the most powerful middle grade book that I've ever read. I can't wait to purchase a copy of this book for myself. I want to read it to my kids. I want to read it again myself. I want the audiobook. I need more of the world. I need more of Luna, the main character. In fact, I came to love all of the main characters. I loved Zan. Glurk was amazing, and he's a freaking swamp monster. Like, it, okay. Okay, wait, I lied. I thought I read three books in November and I didn't read two. The last book I'm gonna talk about for my November reads is Girls Like Us by Rachel Lloyd. As you can see, this book is very heavily annotated. The entire time that I read it, I was like, I need to remember this line or this statistic or this fact or this experience. Rachel Lloyd was a young victim of domestic human trafficking. I think it goes without saying that this book is incredibly triggering for all different types of violence, emotional violence, physical violence, sexual violence. Rachel goes on to open a center called GEMS, which is designed to rescue girls who have been forced into prostitution and also to give them tools, help them heal, and then move forward with their lives. One of the most impactful things I took away from this book was that many of the sexually exploited girls felt that physical and sexual violence in a relationship was normal. And while it's easy to believe that these girls feel that way simply because of their experiences, a study with non-trafficked teens found that over 44% of teenagers felt that some form of sexual and physical violence in a relationship was normal. It's very clear that we have some work to do with how teenagers are looking at healthy relationships, the messages that we're sending teens, and the way that teens govern their own relationships with one another. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about my readathons for December. I will be participating in two, and the books that you see me reading for my readathon will be my TBR for December. The first readathon is by Tiny Book Dragon, and it runs from December 10th to December 16th. It is called A Very Merry Readathon. The first challenge is to read a book set during the holidays, for which I will be reading Father Christmas and Me by Matt Haig. The next challenge is to read a book with Christmassy colors on the cover. Read a book with illustrations, number three. Read a book just because you want to. I will also be reading The Chaos of Standing Still. This book is by Jessica Brody and it features two people who are trapped in the airport during New Year's Eve. Their phones accidentally get swapped and all kinds of chaos ensues read a book that was given to you as a gift. I was actually given A Shadow Girl by Misty Mount at the Midwest Book Fest. This book is published by Between the Lines Publishing and I was talking with the employee behind the booth and she asked what I did for fun and I kind of mentioned that I have a booktube channel and she gave this book to me in exchange for an honest future review. It's basically about a 13 year old girl named Zelia who finds that her body is slowly vanishing. She does research and finds out that her great grandmother vanished in the same exact way. She also finds that she is a shadow girl, which means that she's able to cross between the physical and the spiritual realm. She has a very limited amount of time to figure out how to stop this transformation before she is permanently trapped in the spirit world forever. 
The next readathon I will be participating in is hosted by Carrie Louise Reads, the sweetest person on the face of this planet, and she is hosting it from December 17th to December 31st. So the readathons end within one day of each other, and they're absolutely perfect. The first challenge is to read a book that was given to you, so I will be reading The Shadow Girl by Misty Mount for this. The next challenge is to read a book written by someone or featuring the name Mary, Joseph, or Carol. And for this, I'm going to be reading for the first time in my entire life, A Christmas Carol by the wonderful Charles Dickens. Then we have read a book set during the Christmas season for which I will be reading Landline by Rainbow Rowell. The next challenge is to read a book featuring elves, fairies, or angels. That is gonna be Father Christmas and Me. The fifth challenge is to read a fairy tale retelling. The last book that I read, I finished it two days ago, was Blade So Black, which is an Alice in Wonderland retelling. It was one of the worst books I've ever read in my life, so I'm gonna just bow out of this one. I don't think I can handle another fairy tale retelling. It ruined fairy tales. The sixth challenge is to read A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens and or to watch your favorite movie adaptation of it. I'm going to be doing both of those things. And the last challenge is to give someone a book for Christmas and to spend part of Christmas Eve reading. Okay, my goal is to make this video under 20 minutes, so I hope I'm doing okay so far. Let's just jump into the haul. I went to BookFest like two months ago. I got my first bookish haul ever. I'm not a big fan of buying books. It's kind of my own unique way of handling consumerism. Um, I'm also a minimalist. I don't like to have a lot of things. It gives me a lot of anxiety. And I have a rule where I only purchase books that were either a five-star read or make a good gift. The first thing that I got from the book fest is this cute shirt it says read an effing book look at this look at this so you do know that the shadow girl was given to me at the book fest and the funny thing about father christmas and me this book is actually locally published and i saw it at the book fest and i was like i'm going to be reading that for christmas and lo and behold my library actually carried it Matt Haig does a lot of Christmas children's books, so if you are looking for a lighthearted Christmas read, I would definitely check him out. Uh, Christmas is my favorite holiday. I'm obsessed with it, I always have been, and I'm really excited. I also don't like know the premise of that book. I'm intentionally going in blind. I just, I just wanna read it and fall into the story, and I hope that I enjoy it. I also spent $10 on a bookish towel because fuck my budget, and it says I would rather be reading, which is true. Next, we have Leave No Trace by Mindy Magia. This is a book about a family who goes camping in the Minnesota wilderness. As a Minnesotan and as a black person, I always advise against camping. The father and the son of the family both go missing and 10 years later, the young boy pops up again as a very disturbed adult. He exhibits violent tendencies and has difficulty speaking. Maya Stark is a talented speech language pathologist who has been tasked with this very high profile client. She's been tasked with finding out what happened to this young boy and also with treating him. I love this cover. I partially bought this book for the cover. I love that it was set in Minnesota. I make a lot of jokes about Minnesota because wilderness, but honestly, it is such an atmospheric place for a thriller to take place. I just think, I think the Midwest should be capitalized on much more in books. I really do. I grabbed this graphic novel called Firebug, which is about a fire goddess who has been dormant for many years and she wakes up. Nobody really knows if she is a good goddess or a bad goddess. In fact, she doesn't know herself. So she and the few friends that she has goes on a little quest to kind of find out why she's awake and what her place is. Next in merch, we have another shirt. I couldn't decide between this shirt and the last shirt, so I, I, I bought both of them. It says, walk a mile in my shoes and end up at a bookstore. I haven't worn this yet and I can't wait. I'm so excited. Okay, I just changed my lighting. Hopefully it looks better. I want to make sure I talk about Sigma's bookshelf. This is the first publishing company that exclusively publishes teen works. So if you are a teen author, I highly recommend that you Google Sigma's bookshelf and think about submitting a piece to them, especially after NaNoWriMo wrapped up. Now would be the perfect time. I also picked up my first bookish keychain. The book featured on it is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I've intentionally not put this on my keychain because I was waiting to show you in the video. The last book that I purchased at the book festival is The Way of All Flesh by Ambrose Perry. The cool thing about this is Ambrose Perry is actually a pseudonym for a husband-wife team. The husband is a critically acclaimed crime writer, I believe, and the wife is some type of scientist. The book itself takes place in 1847 in Victorian Edinburgh. 
Dr. Will Simpson, who actually was a real person who discovered chloroform, is one of two protagonists in this story. Dr. Will Simpson is a great eccentric whose house is full of various oddities. He undertakes Will, who is a highly talented and intelligent apprentice. Will moves into Dr. Simpson's home and meets Sarah. Sarah is Dr. Simpson's young housekeeper and she takes an immediate disliking to Will. However, these three unlikely characters are forced to work together when a string of gruesome and violent murders hits Edinburgh. All of the victims are young women and there is a medical component to these murders, think Jack the Ripper, that causes the police to reach out to Dr. Simpson and Will and beg them to help solve the case. I love that it opens up with a detailed map of Edinburgh. I love maps, I'm a nerd. I adore the layout of the chapters and even the print use. The last thing that I'm gonna say about this is that Benedict Cumberbatch's production company has optioned this book for either a TV show or a movie. Y'all, I love Benedict Cumberbatch. I would literally watch him play a wet towel. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching this weird mashup of topics. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm the worst. I forgot to mention that I'm also going to be reading Nosferatu. Um, by Joe Hill, Jonah Hill. It's on hold for the library right now. It's a horror Christmas book. Mr. Hill is Stephen King's son. So I, I will be reading this book as well. People on Bookstagram have like lost their mind over it even though it came out quite a while ago. So I keep seeing it every time I open my Instagram feed and I'm very intrigued. I love horror and I love Christmas. I love that this Christmas season I will be reading a children's book, a fantasy book, a classic, a horror book, and a romance. I feel like I've covered all of my holiday basics and I'm excited to see how it all wraps up. Thank you again for watching this messy ass video. I'm sorry for being a messy bitch. I will do better in the future. Stay sharp and I will see you very soon.